So today is the uh, feast of St. James the Apostle. Uh, his brother was John the Apostle. Uh, they were sons of Zebedee, sons of thunder. Um, they were special friends with Christ. Uh, he was with the group of three, with Peter, James, and John, that went up to Mount Tabor and saw the Transfiguration. He was with Jesus in the small group uh, that went to see Jairus' daughter and raised her from the dead. Um, and it's interesting, the, um, Jesus asked them during our gospel reading, can you drink the cup that I'm about to drink of? And they're very ambitious. They want to be like the vice president. They think Jesus is going to be the president of Israel and the new King David and put a new order in place. And they want to be number two. And, um, and so Jesus is, um, you know, prediction says, you will indeed drink the cup that I'm going to drink. And um, St. James was martyred in the year 44. Uh, Herod Agrippa, uh, so the son of Herod the Great, um, had him martyred uh, in order to please the Jews because the Christians were growing at such a rapid rate. Um, so James went, underwent this incredible transformation. So he went from, uh, you know, wanting this power, this, uh, uh, you know, authority, uh, being able to rule to, like Jesus, following Jesus' way. Um, and so you wonder what happened to him. And as Jesus progressively perfected um, James uh, so that he became more humble, so that he became more of a servant, before, so he became more self-giving, so he was following Jesus' way and, and the uh, way that Jesus asked, you know, asked all of us to follow in his way. James was able to make that transformation, make that change and follow him. Um, all the great saints realize the need for humility. Um, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, who wrote, um, who was the head of the Jesuits, wrote these spiritual exercises. And in there, it's like paragraph 165, he talks about humility. And he talks about the different levels of humility. And I'll, let me read a little bit about those, his spiritual exercise on just humility. And um, the first level of humility is necessary for eternal salvation, and it requires uh, that I lower myself and humble myself as much as I can so that I may obey the law of God in all things. And I'm thinking to myself, reading that, I said, you know, if I could do that, that would be wonderful. Okay, but that's just the first level. And then the second is a more perfect form of humility than the first, although it includes the first as well. And it requires that I not prefer riches to poverty. Doesn't matter whether I'm rich or poor, I don't care. Honor to dishonor. Either way, doesn't matter as long as it's God's will, I'm all right. Long life to a short one. I'm okay with it either way. That's hard. You know, you think about that one, it says, you know, I'd be lucky to get through the first level, but the second is, is tough because it's so much against what our human nature wants. And here's the third. The third, the most perfect form of humility, and it includes both the first and the second. The most excellent humility offers praise and glory to God's majesty by willingly and freely choosing poverty with a poor Christ to riches, insults with the insulted Christ to honors, and being considered stupid and foolish for Christ, who was considered such to be considered wise and prudent in this world. And I'm thinking, you know, St. Ignatius's way to perfection and humility, what a steep climb, you know, what a challenge for every one of us to, to reach that sort of uh, humility. I mean, it's something that we all need to work on, I mean, for our whole lives. Um, in that first reading, Paul refers to us as earthen vessels. So you can think of a thin clay pot with, say, maybe olive oil in it or something like that. It's something temporary, doesn't last long, but it has some treasure inside. So we, 
St. Paul refers to us as earthen vessels with a great treasure inside. And that great treasure in the, that we have inside each one of us is Christ, is Jesus. And he is progressively trying to change each of us just the same way he tried to change St. James to make him uh, more perfect. Um, so today as we celebrate uh, this feast of St. James, we could ask him to intercede for us, to help us on our road to humility, and to help us share the great treasure that has been put in each one of us. Amen.